gamer. You're in the sewer now, bitch. Hi, welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Tenka Gamer, and today we're going to be doing another ranking video. But today I'm going to be using a different format from what I usually use. Today I'm going to be bouncing off a video series made by a YouTube group called Autop Stream, called 31 on 31, where they rank 31 movies on the 31st of a month. And I thought with Gacha nearing its endgame, why not do a 25 on 25 where I rank the Heisei and Rero Kamen Rider seasons? To get the rulings out of the way, I'm not going to be including any Showa seasons, because my opinions on them are sort of samey, so they would, a lot of them would just clump together out of like one area, which would just be bothersome to me. And I'm not going to be including any spinoffs like Black Sun or Amazon, this is just Heisei and Rero proper. Also, to get this out of the way, since I know I'm going to be super loud in this video, this is all just my opinion. This entire ranking is not objective, it's completely biased to my personal tastes, so if I say something you disagree with, don't be a dickhead about it. Instead, put your ranking in the comments below, because I will definitely read those, and I would love to see what your reasonings are as to why you like certain shows and why you don't. Anyways, let's light this firecracker and start with... Okay, yes, I know the show is not over yet, but just hear me out for a quick second. Of the 25 shows on here, I knew Gotcha was going to be at the bottom because from when I first watched this show up till now, I've kept the same opinion that this is the most Nothing Burger Rider show of all time. All the characters are insanely forgettable to me. The only ones I really remember are Hodoro, who just feels like an obnoxious man-child, and Spander, who's supposed to be like a rival, but he feels so stock and so annoying. Structure-wise, it was pretty episodic at first, which I was happy about initially because I wanted a break from the serialized plots we've been getting, but by the second quarter they went right back to being more story-focused, which... what was the point? Not to mention, the story arcs feel so all over the place, like there's no cohesive theme in here. Like, oh, we got a time travel plot, oh, we got a bunch of anniversary stuff, oh, now we're using eggs as symbolism, like, what? Why not better utilize the high school and alchemy aspects you had at the beginning of the show? It felt like this whole show was run around the gimmick that they had planned, which, I'll admit, the chemis had potential. Because I like the idea of these Pokemon as creatures, each having a different power, giving our writer alternate forms, which I wanted to see again. But we run into that same problem most writer shows have of, we have way too many collectibles, we can't see what a lot of them do in the show, but then we get the upgrade form, so all of them are just left completely mute. So disappointing. All of this top Scott chart is the only show on this list I honestly wouldn't recommend to anyone. Because all it is to me is just lesser Forza and Wizard. Two shows you'll see much higher on this list due to sharing similar aspects, but much more utilized. first Kamen Rider show I watched live. Now I was initially pretty excited here because I was interested in the concepts it went for, such as the fantasy theme, the different elements, the use of swords, it was all cool. But as the show went on while I was watching, I started to notice something that was hindering my enjoyment. This show was slow. Like really slow. Now keep in mind Saber is very focused on a story and serialization, which makes sense, it's about fairy tales after all. And a big factor that goes into media for me are the characters. I find none of the characters in Saber to be likable whatsoever. Sure, there's a couple that are okay, but eh. They all come across as 2 one no, and I don't think any of them have good chemistry with one another. So if I don't care about the characters, I'm not going to care about what happens to them. Hence, I didn't give a shit about the story here. So when those two are chalked up together, you get slow pacing, making Saber the perfect blend between being a boring show and a frustrating show. But, I still don't consider it bottom of the barrel here for two big reasons. For one, it's one of my all-time favorite writers aesthetically. I don't think there's a single suit here I genuinely dislike, plus the way it's filmed is super pretty. The second thing is, unlike Gotchar, Saber is very unique compared to other common writers. Remember what I said about its fantasy element? Even with the more magical seasons, you're not going to get anything like that. So if you're really interested, I'd say give it a watch. And there's all the hate comments. Now look, I get it. This is the perfect, most well-crafted, amazing show in this entire franchise. And props to you if you feel that way. But remember, this video is about my personal ranking, and if you want my honest thoughts on it, it's shocking. It's shocking how abysmal the show ended up being for me. Build has zero idea of whether or not it wants to be a serious show or a comedic show. 
to the point where the entire tone will just change in the span of a scene, making the show uncomfortable to watch sometimes due to how whiplashy it is. Writing-wise, again, just like Gotchart, feels all over the place. No, it's not nearly as best as the whole show's still consistently about science fiction, but still, it goes from being about experimentations, discoveries, mysteries, to being a political war drama, to aliens taking over. It's very clear that there were a lot of ideas going in, but the execution would not allow them to mix well because these plotlines very much hard shift from one another. And of course, you can't end up build segment without having to rant about the characters. With Sento, they set him up as this big-headed genius, but he comes across as an idiot most of the time. Especially when the mysteries are emphasized, he'll just believe anything that's sold to him. Gentoku started off as this cold, calculating war criminal who just magically changed to funny shirts guy because of the nebula gas or whatever. Evil was the almighty big bad for the season, but kind of just fucked around most of the time, literally just spinning its wheels personified as a villain. Then there's Grease. Fuck Grease. The only character I genuinely ended up liking was Bonjo, who I'll admit it, if he wasn't attached to this show, probably would have been my favorite secondary writer. But bad comedy and atrocious story arcs really hindered that, so... But, to be nice, something that we can all agree on is the fact that this show... It's not boring. And definitely a lot more I could be talking about if this wasn't a ranking video. But I am kind of a hypocrite for saying that because... Ghost is boring. That's the best way I can sum up my thoughts on this show. Now some of you probably thought this was going to end up dead at the bottom due to its reputation. And yeah, I do think it's as bad as people say it is. But the rest of my summary is going to be pretty tame considering how I already watched the show with people telling me that it was bad. Once again, like Saber, the show is unbearably slow. Mostly due to the story, I just thought it was really boring and the idea of a dead common writer protagonist wasn't used to its fullest potential. The characters this time around, however, were actually pretty inoffensive. Like yeah, we got some pretty bad ones. The supporting cast was pretty trash, the villains were pretty trash. Spectre. At least her sister's cool. But outside of them, I was pretty okay with everyone, especially Takaru. Like yeah, he was kind of boring, but he came across as super likable to me, so I couldn't hate him the way everyone else does. Also, shouts to Necrom. I know a lot of people got engaged with this story. He was pretty solid for me too. I have nothing else to really say here, so I'm just going to talk about why this show ranked higher than Build, since I know that's what you're asking. Ghost really benefited from being unpopular because I had no way to be disappointed while watching. Unlike the last three, I was just pissed off to hell and back. So to sum up my thoughts, was Ghost that bad? Yeah. Did it frustrate me? Not really. Complete. Well boys, we're finally talking about a show from Heisei Phase 1. Now Fives is very, very mixed in the community. You got some people who love this show and think it's a masterpiece, or you got some people who hate it. And a big reason for that is because it's a very negative show. It's really dark, really sad, and it can upset you a lot of the time. And I actually find that endearing because it gives Fives a unique tone amongst the other writers. But my problem is that everything is terrible. This show doesn't upset me in an emotional way, at least not in the way you'd think. It upsets me in a frustrating way. Fives genuinely goes out of its way to piss you off, and for some people that's appealing, I can't stand it for the life of me. And I think the biggest example I can showcase my problem here is with Kaixa. Now I've seen a lot of people come to his defense because he's the you're supposed to hate him archetype. He's a villain, he's supposed to be unlikable, and his unlikability actually makes him well written. That doesn't really work when everyone else in the show is so unlikable. Outside of a couple heartfelt moments, there's nothing really here to balance out the mean-spiritedness, so it comes across as insufferable for the sake of being unsufferable. Not to mention the story constantly builds around misunderstandings, which is one of my least, if not my least favorite story trope in media, so... I still give the show props for having its own identity and trying to go through with that identity, but the way everything was executed was so fucking atrocious, and I can't rank it any higher than here. So number 21, Kamarada Fies. I had two thoughts when going into Kamen Rider Revise. One, this is going to be one of the best Kamen Rider shows I'll ever see in my goddamn life. Or two, this is going to be an absolute fucking train wreck. Turns out, I was wrong on both accounts. Like, to give credit, I still went in pretty positive, but as the show went along, I just... I realized I didn't care. 
I didn't care about Revice whatsoever. Something I've noticed when it comes to my taste in media is that I tend to gravitate towards things where the protagonists are the best characters. And I'm mentioning that here because it feels like they're going for the same approach by having two main writers. So how do I feel about them? Well, Iki's okay. Not great, but he is a pretty standard protagonist for Ryder. Then this fucker comes in and ruins everything. Vice is down there with Toma and Hodor as one of the worst Ryder MCs. His whole character is just boiled down to annoying comic relief, and Iggy doesn't really have the personality to bounce off of him, so they don't have much of a dynamic going on besides Iggy gets annoyed with him sometimes. The relationship basically relies on emotional moments, which ultimately fall flat because they don't really evolve throughout the show for it to feel impactful. And there's not really much I can say about the other characters besides annoying, boring, you kind of just existed, you were okay until the show tried taking you seriously, you were the best one but you ultimately did not matter. Like you see what I mean here? Also, similar problem to Gotchard, the story felt like such an afterthought in this show. Granted, I'm pretty sure there was a lot of script changes going through while the show was airing so that might be why, but I can't look you dead in the eye and tell you a single aspect about that story. It felt like they were just sort of spinning their wheels throughout most of it. While I wouldn't call it atrocious, unlike the bottom four shows on here, this is about as bland and mundane you can get for Common Rider, at least for the modern ones, because if we're going to show it in this and ugh. But yeah, number 20, Common Rider Revice. Kamen Lido Decay! With Decade, this is the gateway point to the seasons that I enjoy to some degree. Everything here and onwards I'd say is average or above. So for the positives, I'd say the best part about this show is the protagonist. I mean, is just a cool and funny character. Not to mention his power to transform into past writers is also really sick. And to go off of that, I like the idea of an anniversary season, paying tribute to the first phase of the Heisei era, and to an extent the entire franchise at the time. I know fanservice can be kinda tacky for some people, but here it was cool to see. Not to mention, it's the shortest season on here, making the pacing a whole lot better than most of the other writers. Unfortunately, I have nothing else to say about Decade that's really good, so now we're going to move on to the negatives. While Decade himself was great, I didn't like the rest of the characters whatsoever, especially when it came to Dian and Onodera. They clearly wanted to recreate the same appeal they had with Tsukasa and Godai, the execution fell so flat that they came across as super unlikable. Speaking of execution, while I did say that the fan service was cool, the AR worlds were just not good. I get they're meant to be what-ifs of the previous shows, but they were so boring in comparison. Not to mention, the ending was awful. They basically tied it to the crossover movie with W, and the movie was fine and all, but once they made a satisfying conclusion a Decade, and while I would say I enjoyed Decade, even going so far to say it's more interesting than a couple of the shows above it, there were way more flaws than there were strong points, hence why I'm ranking it slightly lower here. Now, Deno is interesting, because this show has a really cool concept behind it. A more comedic writer starring a protagonist that's possessed by four spirits, each giving him a different form and personality. And how did the execution turn out? Eh. Like I said, we're in the average territory now, so I don't think it was poorly done, but the biggest problem I have with Deno is that it's very, very simple. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with that, but when you're watching for 49 episodes, the novelty kind of starts to run dry. Especially for someone like myself who isn't really invested in what makes the show appealing. The aesthetics and motif are probably my least favorite of the Heisei era. I'm not much of a train guy, so that concept is kind of just out the window for me, and the suits tend to look either gaudy or boxy in my opinion. I wasn't really that grabbed by the comedy either. A lot of it just came across as regular with Togo humor, but more front and center. Which sucked, because I loved shows like Car Ranger and Ultraman Rube, where I felt like they were actively going for a more comedic tone with their writing. And to top it all off, a lot of the characters just came across as super one note. The only real standout here was Xeranos, and that was because he was the more story-focused part of the show. While I'd still recommend Deno, don't try to go out of your way to watch it. Make it like a side thing to put on when you're in the mood for something more lighthearted. This is going to piss off some people because I know Agito has gotten a big uprise in popularity, but for me personally, this is the most average season in the entire franchise. Like Deno, there was a really good concept here. 
essentially having three separate ride protagonists all having their own stories that are slowly connected more and more due to a mysterious ferry boat incident. We first meet Commodore G3, a police officer working for an undercover unit that's trying to learn and combat against the monsters we know so little about. While not being my favorite secondary rider, him and his supporting cast were honestly very endearing. They all had a really great group dynamic, very likable, and I was always rooting for them to be the bad guy no matter how little of a chance that seemed. We also have Commodore Gills, a normal man who had his life ruined after a fatal accident that afterwards slowly turned him more and more into a monster. I think he's the deepest and most well-written character in the show. Granted, his story is very depressing, so your enjoyment of him depends on your taste in things. For me, he kind of reminded me of a Fives character, but much better. Then we have Shuichi, an amnesiac who was taken in by a normal family, going on to help fight the monsters as Kamen Rider Agito. He's the weakest part of the show. Like Iki, Shuichi has a problem with not really standing out. Despite being the most involved in the story, you only really remember him for fighting the monsters to help G3. While there wasn't really anything I hated about Agito besides some of the villains, the problem here was that the show was super boring. Not like Ghost or Revice boring, because there was still a lot going on here, but you can tell they want to go for the same feel as Kuga, which makes sense, it's a kind of sequel to that. But it just didn't feel as nuanced as I think it could have been, if that makes any sense. Granted, I'd still recommend Agito. Not a show for beginners, but still fun enough. Forze is a good show, albeit sort of overrated as well. Now to give credit where it's due, I genuinely appreciate how the showrunners went out of the way to give Forze its own unique tone, which is a big reason why I place it way higher than Gotchard. It's fun, it's goofy, it's uplifting, there's a lot of influence from American shows and movies, it very much has its own identity. However, that sort of style doesn't really set in until later on in the show, so I found the beginning very disappointing. And I think Gendro is a best example of that. Considering his little angle of friendship and his huge popularity, you think he'd be someone who just radiates positive energy, someone who's just super lovable to the point where everyone in the show thinks he's weird, but you, the viewer, can't get enough of him. And yeah, he has moments like that. But when you see how he's introduced where he acts so super vigilant and aggressive to people, his motivation just comes across as all talk. If I'm being honest, it makes him one of my least favorite characters in the show, because another aspect I like is the heavy focus on the supporting cast. We don't really get writers that try to utilize and develop everyone like the Rider Club. And while there were some members I liked better than others, everyone felt pretty consistent. They all had really good emotional moments. Speaking of writers, my favorite character in the whole show was Ryusei. His whole redemption took too long in my opinion, but he was a lot of fun. He has amazing looking suits, a badass fighting style, a good relationship between him and Tomoko, who I also really liked. He was the best part for me. So to sum up my thoughts for those interested, don't go in expecting this heartwarming emotional joyride. You can still get that out of Forza, but whether you do or not, it's still better to have low expectations. But, I would still say it's a lot of fun. Good characterization, great ensemble cast, stands out in its own way. If you like any of those things, I can guarantee you're going to love this show. straight up with you guys, Zero One was the hardest series to rank for this list. My opinion on the show changes completely as it goes along. To start, I think the beginning of the show was genuinely really good. The introduction to the world and characters was handled very well, the action was phenomenal, the storytelling was enticing which kept me wanting to watch more and more. The middle portion? Absolutely atrocious. This is when Thouser becomes super prominent and he's one of the worst characters in the franchise down there with Grease. The writing took a complete nosedive, especially with Valkyrie, she was just fucking wasted for no reason. Then you get to the end, which is... okay? It's kind of rocky. Some episodes I think still hold quality, others I think are still pretty fucking stupid, some are even just average, and landed on a pretty mid-tier note. Trying to configure my mess of opinions on the show made me realize that Zero One is a series with high highs and low lows. While I know a lot of the flaws ruin this show for some people, I think I'm confident in saying this is still an above average series, since a lot of what I liked stayed pretty consistent. The suits are glorious. They help add to the action making Zero One a visually pleasing show. And going back to Thouser, yes he absolutely knocks down this season a couple packs for being an unfunny bastard that they tried so hard to make redeemable, but he's the only character in the show I didn't like. In fact, I still think Horobi and Jin might be my favorite villains of the Rara era so far, so not all the bad guys are trash. And in terms of popularity, Vulcan is still an awesome secondary writer. His actor gave a thousand percent, I'm sorry I had to make the joke, and his characterization was very passionate and impacting. And while I've talked bad about Kamen Rider stories before, yes Zero One is poorly written at times, 
but I was never bored with it, so the pacing honestly wasn't that awful. So yeah, while Zero One can reach trash territory, I was still invested enough for the good to outweigh the bad. So number 15, Kamen Rider Zero One. Alright, with Hibiki, you already know what the general consensus is. The first half is really good, the second half is really bad. Most people are very mixed on this show. For some, it's even their least favorite. But I'm actually somewhat of a defender of this show. So let's talk about why I think Hibiki is underrated. Now, yes, I agree the second half is atrocious. So painstakingly bland and frustrating, it makes Saber look gospel. But that first half outweighs it for a very huge reason. I've said earlier that I like commoners that have their own identity and it can't get more different than the guy who wasn't even meant to be a common writer. What we have here is the spiritual, sentimental coming-of-age story with a main writer like no other, who acts as a mentor and almost father figure to this kid who acts as the audience POV. It stands out on a visual level as well. The designs for the writers, or Oni in this case, completely take out the bug structure in favor of something more dark, creepy, and sleek, which fits the theme. Not to mention, the primary setting for a lot of the action is set in the forest, which helps give us a distinct setting and adds to the supernatural element for Hibiki's motif. My only real complaint is that besides Todoroki, who I think is an underrated tertiary writer, no one else in the show is really that memorable. They're still likable, yeah, but not memorable. And speaking of complaints, when you move on to the second half, everything I just praised about the show goes down the drain due to its massive and sudden staff change. They add in a lot of unnecessary characters in Superlay like Shiori and Kiri who are just mind-bogglingly annoying and unlikable. The forest setting was completely ditched and now all the fight scenes take place within the city areas, like every other writer, losing a core part of its identity. And what sucks the most is that the final form was being built up as the staff change was happening, so the debut of it was super underwhelming since he knows a completely different fighting style now instead of, you know, training for it like he's known for doing. Like, yeah, Hibiki ended on such a rush, shitty note that makes me not want to put it any higher, but when you see how much heart and soul was put in that first half, I'm obviously going to have more to say about it, which in turn makes me acknowledge it more, so I can't really place it any lower. Therefore, number 14 is going to be Kamen Rider Hibiki. Start your engine! See, now we're getting into the rankings that hurt me to put this low, because we're catering into personal favorites of mine. Driving away mirrors Hibiki in the sense that one half is stronger than the other, but this time in reverse. I wouldn't go so far to call Drive's first half bad per se, but it is very slow and episodic, so if you're not into that kind of structure, then this is rough. However, things do start to pick up when they introduce my all time favorite secondary rider. Mach is easily the best character in this show. Personality-wise, he's just a lot of fun, super goofy, showboaty, extravagant, and on top of that, he has a really good story having to face off against his father, Gold Drive. Speaking of which, this show has some of the best villains in the franchise. Gold Drive himself was diabolical as fuck. Heart and brain, despite being roid mutes, felt very, very human and had a great dynamic due to being so different. Medic existed, and that's not even taking into account the other best character in the show, Kamen Rider Chaser. The story's compelling. His redemption from being one of the main villains to becoming the serious tertiary writer, trying to learn more and more about what it means to be human, made him honestly one of the most deepest and heartfelt characters in the entire franchise. While I can sing all the praises about Drive's cast, this does lead me into another hot take I have in which I don't think Shinosuke is that interesting of a protagonist. I still thought he was good obviously, when you compare him to the other Drive characters and even some other main writers, some are just done better I think. Kiriko is still cool though. So yeah. Great characters, great story, lots of drama and emotion. Even with the generic first half, I'd say Drive's the first writer we have thus far that's consistently good the whole way through. But what other shows lie ahead of it? Cyclone Joker! Now this is a fucking classic right here. Don't let this placement fool you, I genuinely believe that W is one of the best common writer shows out there. Remember when I said Revice didn't live up to the potential of two main writers due to the protagonist not being that great? Well let me tell you, Shodor and Philip are one of if not the best writer duo of all time. Shodor is a gawky detective with a strong sense of justice, striving him to become hard-boiled which makes him even cooler as his character progresses. And Philip is a mysterious yet quirky source of intel you start to learn more and more about as the show goes along. They both work great together as they have a good balance of serious and comedic moments as well as having a tight bond due to their very different skill sets. 
Another thing I love is how the show utilizes its motif to work in both being episodic and story focused. It's a detective show. It works episodically for a case by case structure. Yes, it was all two parts, which I hate, but it didn't feel that egregious here. And it also works in a serialized manner due to its underlying mystery element, which not only fits the theming, but makes you want to binge to see how things are going to be solved. And just like Drive, the villains in W work really well too. They come across as almost cult like at first. You don't really know what their deal is, but again, Thanks to the theming, they also develop as characters very very well as they're so integrated into the mystery aspect. Now you're probably wondering why W is only at number 12 considering this is the most positive I've been thus far. Two reasons. One, I hated Akiko, one of the worst supporting characters in this franchise. I get why she acts the way she does, but she's just there to be a nuisance to everyone. The second is I hated that epilogue episode they did, a couple common writers did that, but it just felt so unnecessary here. They really should have ended off at episode 48. And there's a smaller reason that despite me thinking the show is good, there are others that I think are slightly more appealing. Such as... Change Beetle. Now when it comes to Kabuto, on top of having some of the best suit designs, it really leaned into being an action show, which I adore. The concept and usage of a Kamen Rider with super speed was done so amazingly well, especially on a technical level, because for 2006, these are still some of the craziest fight scenes I've seen, period. It's also home to one of my favorite Rider quartets. Considering this is the 35th anniversary of the franchise, they tried retooling aspects from the previous main riders into entirely new characters. Tendo is a badass main rider. Yes, he comes across as a Gary Stu sometimes, but his compassion for others and almost random tendencies actually makes him pretty likable. Eat your heart out stronger. Kagami is one of my other favorite secondary writers as he has a great underdog story trying to earn his title as common writer and is a very relatable everyman, similar to Kuga. Daisuke is a charismatic motherfucker who has a lot of great comedic moments, a lot like V3. And Surupi is a completely original character who acts as a really good foil to Tendo and has a really tragic backstory going for him that makes for an insane plot twist. Though outside of those four, the rest of the characters aren't that great, especially the worms. Like, geez, talk about a whole lot of nothing. And another big fault here is the lack of plot. There is a lot of filler episodes, and a good few of them can be very, very boring. And when you get to the last third where they really try to lean into the story, it's very poorly executed, which again, like Hibiki, makes Kabuto end on a very sour note. That being said, I would still very much recommend Kabuto, and it hurts not being in the top 10. Don't go in expecting a deep story, but do go in just for the fun ride. expecting this to be so high up, huh? Yes, Zeo is easily one of my favorite common writers of all time and I have no shame in saying that. Let's get into why though. For starters, I actually enjoyed a lot of the tributes the show had going for it. No, they weren't perfect, but I still think they were handled better than decades because they at least tried to acknowledge the Heisei era seasons, not just alternate versions of them. Plus, I think the idea of the Another Writers was really cool. Also, unlike Decade, I actually enjoyed a lot of the original stuff Zeo had going for it. Despite all the hate he gets, Soko actually ended up being one of my favorite main writers. Yeah, he's a dork, which I get, but unlike Hodoro, the show's not really afraid to play into that. In fact, most of the characters think he's a weirdo because of his motive to become king. And in turn, that kind of makes you want to root for him. He's fighting for his own future when everyone else is going against it for one reason or the other. Also, I really like the king storyline due to the constant tension of whether or not he ends up becoming Omogio, who, if you saw my death battle video, now I think is probably the rawest villain in the franchise. But going into other characters, I also really liked Gates. He did as a real good foil to Sogo, growing from his enemy to his best friend. Yeah, he was very back and forth with his motivations, but when you're dealing with the structure of time and how every little thing can affect the future, can't say I blame him for that. Also, Waz. While I don't have as much to say, him being Sogo's hype man was just a lot of fun. Despite driving him to become evil, which goes against his motives, it's just funny to see Waz go out of his way to show loyalty and basically act as a narrator for the show. However, we do have another Kabuto situation where the rest of the characters aren't as good. They're not unlikable, at least not all of them but they're very forgettable. Even Tsukiyomi, who I like, didn't really add much here. And let's face it, the story's an absolute mess. It's about time travel, so that's bound to happen, but there were a lot of writing decisions where I was like, why? But I still stand by the fact that this show is very overhated. I wouldn't recommend it to people until they've at least somewhat watched the other shows, but in my opinion, still very good. Turn up. Now, Blade is a hard show to talk about. This is the first time Kamen Rider really delved into story. The plot is the most important part of the show, so major spoilers here. First thing I want to bring up is the structure, because admittedly, I hated that first start. 
very slow, super boring, and you constantly get annoyed by Kenzaki for being too trusting of Garen when he's so clearly trying to go rogue. However, when the show moves to the actual secondary writer Chalice, then things start to get fucking going, since he's one of the two best characters in this show. Hajime is essentially the main focal point of the story. He's set up as what's basically the main villain in being the Joker undead, but after assisting in human life, he slowly starts to grow more and more compassionate and sympathetic, making for, in my opinion, the best redemption arc in this entire franchise. Going back to Kenzaki, despite what he said about him in the first arc, he's amazing throughout the rest of the show. He's just a walking beacon of positivity, and acts as the one who shows how you made the vows of human morals. While I don't think they're super dynamic, their type bond really highlights the show, and his sacrifice at the end to allow Hajime to keep living really cements him as one of the most respectable protagonists in this series. Now while those two fucking carry, Garen and Liangle aren't that great. Garen, while he has some meme moments, eh. He's only memorable in that first arc and then kinda just plays third world and he becomes a good guy again. Hence why I call Chaos the real secondary writer. And Liangle, he's just kind of a bitch. He sort of gets jobbed by the other characters and monsters, so not much to say on him. Including the rest of the supporting cast, the characters besides Blade and Chalice are whatever. But again, this is more story focused, so I'd still recommend it to those who like not just that, but also good villains. Because again, Hajime is the main vocal point, and the rest of the undead are really brutal, have good designs, and all have a world conquering motive thanks to the battle game. So yeah, I am warning you of the very slow start, but stick around for the rest of the show, because Blade very much stands out with its plot, and will leave you tearing up with the finale. When it comes to Kamen Rider Kiva, the first thing that comes to mind is that this show has the best aesthetics I've ever seen in my goddamn life. I love the classic monster motif. It's a theme I think more shows and media need to implement, and every suit is so well designed that there isn't a single one I think is bad. Now for most people that's the only compliment since this show is very unpopular, but despite going in thinking it was going to be bad, I actually came out really loving the story and characters. I thought the dual plotline was a really good idea and was executed pretty well. It was interesting having all the events and story beats of 1986, then seeing how they all play out in 2008. Not to mention, having two different casts, each with different dynamics and personalities, really added on to that appeal, especially with our two main characters. Otego is perfectly crafted to make an unlikable character on paper charismatic as fuck. His overconfidence and boisterous attitude made him badass enough to be a serious hero, but eccentric enough to make him funny as well. And despite being the exact opposite, the same can be said for Wataru. He also had a really cool demeanor, especially as Kiva because god look at those fight scenes. But even his timidness, which I thought was going to be annoying, made him a lot of fun. I would even go so far to say he pulled it off better than Ryotaro since Watcher wasn't as much of a sad sack, at least not always, and his uprising confidence felt more gradual. And also, similar to the undead in Blade, I really liked the Fangire. Sure the main villains are pretty simple, but when it came to their intricate glass scene designs as well as their mysterious almost horror-like presence in each episode, it ended up making the Monster of the Week format Toku's known for very endearing. However, to make another less quality comparison, remember when I said Blade had a bad beginning arc? Well, Kiva very much mirrors that in having a shitty ending arc. The writing took an absolute nosedive, all the characters become super unlikable, the pacing becomes very whiplashy. It's that kind of flaw that makes me put these two on somewhat equal footing. However, I still give Kiva the uptick for number 8, because it's a lot more flashy and fun, and the beginning is still pretty good, making it a lot easier to jump in if you want to watch. So, if you weren't able to tell by the placement so far, I'm not the biggest fan of Rare Rider. Even with Zero One, I was only able to enjoy parts of it, there hasn't been one I just flat out liked. However, Geats came along and took me by absolute surprise, this is easily the best Rider season we've gotten in years. Now a unique aspect about this show is the Battle Royale thing. Thanks to the Desire Grand Prix always resetting when someone wins, we get a new set of characters each time it happens. This really helps signify what arc the show is focusing on. While I do think it was a really good idea, it also leads into my main opinion that Geats can be kinda rocky. Again, this isn't really a flaw, I still thought the show was consistently good, it's just that some arcs are written better than others and a lot of my enjoyment depended on what characters we got in said arcs. On the right side, the main four we see throughout the entire show were all done amazingly well. Ace is one of my favorite protagonists in this franchise. People try to blow him off as the worst version of Tendo, but he's really not. Outside the fact that he's an experienced main rider who's kind of an asshole, they're nothing alike. At the start of the show you know nothing about him and he was willing to manipulate and screw over other characters just for his own gain. It's not until later that you find out more about his motives, wishes, and how he impacts all the other characters that matter. It makes him feel more layered than what you'd expect in a show like this. Similarly, a lot of people criticize Neon mainly for the story revolving around her parents, which I kind of understand, 
But even with that, she was still probably the most likable character in this show and was given a lot more personality and focus compared to most female writers. Michigana was also handled very nicely, probably the most well-received character in this show. She had a really good rivalry with Ace and it was cool seeing the perspective of a normal guy and how participating in the DGP affected him and drove his motivation to vengeance. Hell, even Caleb, who I thought was affected the most by the show's bumpy writing, ended up being my second favorite behind Ace. He was that everyman. He was the relatable stand-up for the audience. And what I just said about Michigana, we actively see how participating in the DGP is affecting him. So whenever he wasn't around, because that happens sometimes, it feels like a key element to the show is missing. I feel like I'm ending this short, but all in all, I would absolutely recommend this show. It has a really strong main cast, a couple of good side characters too, don't get me wrong. Very much unique for a writer show. I don't know how well it would hold up for beginners, but if you're interested, give it a watch. Number 7. When I tell you how much it hurts not having Kuga in the top five, I, I know what you're thinking. I feel the same way. Like This is one of the best common writers of all time. But remember, this isn't an objective list. This is just my personal list. And for me personally, there's just five others I like more. But we're talking about Kuga. And in my opinion, this is the perfect introductory series. This feels like the start of a new era. And I say that because of how the show handled Kuga as a power set. It came from a long ancient build that Goda just happened to bestow upon. And from there, the characters tried to figure out what exactly this power source is, what are its capabilities, why are these monsters appearing everywhere, what is a commoner supposed to be? Some people who aren't as fond of Kuga will talk about how slow it is, but I feel like the mystery and buildup makes the pacing and overall show structure really good. I was kept invested the whole way through. And the characters, yes! Every single good guy in this show is so goddamn likable and interesting, especially Godai. He was written so brilliantly as a positive character. He's someone who prioritizes kindness and the well-being of others, while also being well rounded enough to feel human. Plus, he had a great dynamic with the entire supporting cast. Biggest example being Ichijo, who might be my favorite supporting character in Ryder. His seriousness bounced off of Godot's positivity in a fun way, and when he first finds out about Kuga, Ichijo was the first one to support his friend and sometimes help out in a fight if needed. He didn't have a Ryder suit either, so damn, talk about a bromance. I was just never bummed out with this show. Even with the Gurongi, they weren't given that much development to showcase any negative focus, but they were still utilized in a way for them to come across as atmospheric and creepy, which still makes them great villains, I think. If you couldn't tell by the pattern, I love Kuga not just for its positivity, because some shows on the lower end of this list go for that too, but for its realness. This is the most realistic common writer to this day. And because it showcases being kind-hearted as a moral, it makes me feel like there's genuine good in this world, rather than just being told there is. Again, like some writers lower on this list. So yeah. One of the best common writers. If I had to recommend three shows to someone who knows Zilch about Ryder, it'd be Kuga and the top two, which we'll get to later. Which makes you think, what could possibly top this? All the other phase one shows got lower than Kuga, right? Adobento. That's right everybody, my favorite common writer of Heisei Phase 1 is in fact Ryuki. Now I know Ryuki is a pretty divisive choice for the best, but honestly I feel like this and Kuga go for a similar motive in trying to be more character focused. Granted, both of their approaches were very different. Kuga focuses more on its ensemble cast and more supportive roles, noticeable by how good I was the only writer. Ryuki, however, this was their first time having shitloads of writers all in one season, each with conflicting personalities and morals, which is a big reason why I like it better. You see all these different characters getting unique dynamics with one another and having their own motivations to fight in the Rider War. Shinji was a great standard for the audience. You respect his drive to end the war and stop all the fighting, no matter how much of a dumbass he was. Ren, despite not being the title character, was basically the main protagonist. This was our first time having a more serious, experienced secondary writer, and in my opinion, he did it the best, especially when playing off of Shinji. Zolda, even though he was a total fucking prick, was a lot of fun to watch, especially when you consider how smart and cunning he was in battle. And Oja was the perfect character for a show like this because he was an absolute agent of chaos whose only goal was to murder people. How fun. Even the smaller characters in this show were memorable, like Guy, who was a fucking asshole, and Rai, who really helped develop Shinji's character due to also being pacifistic and wanting to end the war. Also, going back to power sets, I like how each writer differentiated based off the mirror monsters they got, whether it came from the suits making them look like different warriors, or the advent decks giving them different weapons and abilities. Also, hilarity, this is the darkest season in the franchise, but unironically, it's also the funniest. 
Because I'm sorry, episode 9 clears anything that happens in Dead O. Find me in the comments. All in all though, Ryuki's on the positive end for me. Fantastic for those wanting something more dramatic, good action, and a likable cast full of terrible people. But from here on out, we got Neo Heisei leading to the next pick. There's a lot to get into with O, so bear with me. First thing I want to talk about are the characters, because my thoughts on them are very similar to Kuga's. Everyone in O's feels important in some way, and no one is really unlikable. Eiji is a great light-hearted, free-spirited protagonist, similar to Godai. Ankh, now that I'm mentioning him, is my favorite supporting character thanks to his redemption arc. I retract my statement earlier despite still loving Ichijo. Date and Goto were both equally cool as birth, I like the student mentor dynamic they had. Hina added a lot of good emotional moments, Kugami was insane but was funny as hell, and I'll just come out and say it, I think O's had better villains than Kuga, because I liked how each of the Greed's personalities and motives tied to their respective core medals. Speaking of which, the core medals are the best gimmick Ryo's ever had. Like I said, they'll just turn out so many collectibles to the point we don't get to see what most of them can do. But with O's, all the medals were tied to the in-show forms, and they had a mix and match element to them, so they got to make loads of collectibles while also giving each of them a specific power-up that we got to see, making O's, as a writer, probably my favorite. Also, not to mention the soundtrack. This sort of introduced my love to Ska, among other things, so that added along with how many instruments and background music they made, 10 out of 10. This is the series that got me interested in the franchise, and to this day, it's the most fun I've ever had with a Kamen Rider. On top of having great characters and a decent story, we get beautiful suits, good music, more complex villains. Again, this is so high up because O's does a lot that appeals to me, which I really gotta explain for this next one. Now don't get me wrong, this is very much a style over substance type of show. I'm aware of that. This show is very victim of the week heavy, which people hate. But I fucking love Kamen Rider Wizard. First things first to get this out of the way, the thing everyone unanimously agrees upon, the suits and action choreography are fucking peak. Wizard's base form is one of my favorite designs in anything ever. And I like how he has his own unique flying star rolling around flips and kicks, which makes sense considering punching could damage the rings. Also, another good aspect that people don't seem to talk about as much are the two charismatic main writers we get. Haruto is easily the best part of this show, and my favorite character in all of Kamen Rider. This motherfucker is just so damn cool and has a well-rounded personality. He can be upbeat when he needs to be, he can be an asshole when he needs to be, he can be comedic, he can be stoic, he's the entire fucking package. As for Nito, while I was annoyed with him at first, he definitely grew on to me over time. They gave him some good heartfelt moments to make him come across as likable, but he was very much the more weird and comical of the two, which I miss for secondary writers. These two had such a great dynamic together. Not just in terms of Harto's sarcasm clashing with Nito's oddity, but how well it fits their roles. Nowadays the protagonist is just the more naive lighthearted one, and the secondary writer is more experienced. And that whole archetype has just grown so tiresome to me. Getting back to the structure though, you can definitely see how Wizard sort of became the transition between episodic two-parters and serialized story. Because this, along with Forze, was the most egregious with the two-parters, which I'll admit, killed the pacing. Wizard is not something I think you should binge. But remember what I said about the style over substance? I think whenever Wizard does try to have substance, it fucking hits. I think the show is at its best when it tries to sell a story even though that's not really the point. Infinity is one of my favorite Final Form debuts because of how much the stakes were raised. It was those episodes that made me realize why that shift in structure may have happened. Besides the unpopularity, just ignore that. Most important thing I want to say, because I did talk about the show's bad reputation and I do still have problems with it. But if you're not really familiar with Kamen Rider and you're thinking, damn, this season looks cooler than the rest of them. I say this as someone who felt the same, give it a watch, 100% recommend. Not worth missing out on solely because other people say it's bad. Where do I begin with Kamen Rider Gain? I guess to start since we're coming up a wizard, this show has a really good motif along with some banger suit designs. I love that each rider is based off a different type of warrior and with the fruit theming that's added on, it gives the suits this citrusy, almost fluorescent look to them. Gain also shines really well with its cast, ranging from the growing rivalry between Koda and Kaido, with each of their motivations leading them down two very different paths in life, 
Michi being this happy-go-lucky kid who goes on a downward spiral to villainy, the morally ambiguous Drizzle Corporation trying to learn more about the Helheim Force and Envies, and the amazing comedy bits between Bravo and Gridon, I feel like everyone had a purpose in this show. The best part about this show though, and the reason why I think it's one of the best common writers to get into, is the shonen-like structure and plot, which appeals to me on so many levels. It starts off very simple, being about breakdancing and these virtual Pokemon battles, but then when the monsters start to break loose and Koda gets his rider powers, that's when things start to ramp up more and more each episode. And I appreciate that. Usually with tone shifts like this is a heel turn, but I think Gaim executes this concept great because it shows you the more fun and goof side of Rider at the beginning, and unveils the more dark nature you can go for in a way that's not off-putting. In my opinion, this has a similar appeal to Wizard with the cool theming and good leads, but Guy matches out because it has a better story. But unfortunately, it came second in this ranking, just only getting beat by... Exade is by far the best season in this entire franchise and I will not be hearing any arguments. I went into the show thinking it was pretty solid, not anything amazing, but all of a sudden it started getting good and it just got better and better with the stakes raising higher with each episode passing by. It blew Gaim out of the water in terms of how it handled serialization. There was not a single character in Exe that I disliked. Emu started off as this naive medical intern, but when I tell you that that man went on a journey and became a badass by the end of the show, I felt like he grew the most out of any Rider protagonist. And that's not even bringing up Peridot, who's by far my favorite Rider villain. He was so goddamn creepy and had a badass dual power set between fighting and puzzle games. And when you find out how he's meant to be a parallel to Emu, BRO! Plus, think about all the other characters. Hero dealing with the trauma of losing his girlfriend was tragic. Taiga and Nico's partnership together was unexpectedly emotional and wholesome. Blazer started off as a total dick but ended off as one of the most likable characters in the show. And who could forget, Shindan Kuroto. This is how you make a more serious character comedic. Because the whole god complex thing was there from the start, it was just played more straight. His character never really changed, he was just played up to 11. Therefore a lot of this comedy felt much more natural and funny. Because man, could you imagine if they tried to make someone comedic by either just throwing away their whole character or just adding annoying bits to someone who's meant to be taken seriously? Man, that would have been frustrating! Ah, <laughs> oh, fucking hell. But anyways, the idea of a video game themed common writer was so cool, and it was executed pretty well. I love how each gacha is tied to a different genre, like platformers, RPGs, racing games, etc. Plus, it was cool seeing how different the suits look compared to other writers. It kind of mirrors Hibiki, where instead of being dark and sleek, Xyz was super bright and cartoony. There was just nothing I hated about the season. On top of adhering to my interest, things just kept moving forward, everything just felt so perfectly crafted, to the point where I don't know if there will be another writer that dethrones it. So, to fellow x fans, I hope you guys enjoyed taking the top spot of this video. And there you have it, my thoughts on the Heisei and Rewa eras of Kamen Rider thus far. Did you agree with my list? I sincerely doubt it. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed anyways. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you watched the whole way through. Pretty sure this is my longest video yet, I put a lot of time into this. Make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, follow me on Twitter, links in the description, and I'll see you boys later. Bye!